We're now ready to talk about the amount of work that a force will do along a trajectory. Uh, in this case, our trajectory is r of t equals t, t squared, uh, which is a parabola. When t equals zero, we're at the point zero, zero. When t equals one, we're at the point one, one. When t equals two, we're at the point two, four. t equals three, three, nine, etc. Uh, our force is given by minus y x, and we're interested in the amount of force this does along uh, for this trajectory when t goes from one to three. And we're going to approximate this work using the smallest t in this region. The smallest t in this region is t equal one, uh, and when t equals one, our location is one, one, so we'll be at this point. The force at 1, 1, we substitute x equal 1, y equal 1 into f, and we get our force is minus 1, 1. So this is our force uh, at the location 1, 1. The direction of our curve is given by r prime of t equals 1, 2 t. Uh, when t equals 1, that's the vector 1, 2. So we're interested in the amount of force uh, from minus 1, 1 that points in the direction uh, 1, 2. That's given by uh, the magnitude of f in this direction is f dot direction over magnitude of direction. f dot direction is minus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2, which is 1. Uh, magnitude of the direction is square root of 5. So f that's applicable is 1 over the square root of 5. Next, we need the distance uh, that we're going to travel when t goes from 1 to 3. And to do that, we take a different approach and we use speed times time. Remember that r prime of t is the velocity vector and the magnitude of r prime of t is the speed. So our speed is the square root of 5, we'll call them uh, meters per second. Uh, our distance is speed times the amount of time it's sustained. We maintain the square root of 5 for 2 seconds. So our distance is square root of five meters per second times two seconds, which is square root of five times two. Work is F that applies one over square root of five times speed, which is the square root of five times two. The square root of fives cancel and our work is two joules. It's worth noting that we have this cancellation of the speed, which is the magnitude of R prime of T in the numerator and uh, the magnitude of r prime of t, which is used to make the direction a unit vector, and the denominator, and we get a cancellation between the magnitude of square root of five uh, of r prime of t here, and the magnitude of uh, r prime of t here, and that's not an accident. It's going to happen a lot. Now, if we have a circumstance where we have a vector field uh, which represents forces uh, throughout uh, a region. And we're going to trace a trajectory defined by a parametric curve through that force field. We're ready to talk about the amount of work that this force field does as we cross, uh, traverse this trajectory. So uh, our trajectory is dictated by a parametric curve, as always. Uh, our force field is a function of location. Our location is a function of t. So it's worth noting that uh, we can also define our force field as a function of t by substituting x of t and y of t into x of y and f. So given the circumstance where we go from t initial to t final uh, through this force field, uh, we're going to follow our normal procedure. First, we divide our trajectory in pieces. Uh, interestingly enough, we don't divide it in terms of x and y this time, but rather in terms of t. So in this case, we're dividing it into two uh, pieces, each of which has the same duration, delta t. They don't necessarily have the same delta x or delta y. Okay. So our first uh, division uh, starts at t0. At t0, we find r prime of t, which is the direction of the curve. We plug uh, the location into f and find the vector field. And then uh, we look for the amount of work for this piece uh, from uh, given this f and this t and this r prime of t. Then we do the second, the same thing with the second piece uh, using t1 uh, 
and uh, we find the direction of the curve, r prime of t1, and then we uh, find the force field, and uh, we then have the amount of work that's done by this force field uh, over each of these pieces of the curve. Okay. So for each division, uh, we're looking for the amount of work that this uh, force field does uh, over the course of this trajectory. So remember that uh, the work equals F that's uh, applicable to this force field times the distance. Uh, F in the direction of the curve is F dot R prime of T over the magnitude of R prime of T. Uh, the distance is the speed, which is the magnitude of R prime of T times delta T. The R magnitude of R prime of T cancels and for each distance, the amount of work we do is f dot r prime of t uh, times delta t. So uh, with that, we are ready to add up uh, the work done through our division. So our work equals the amount of work over the first division plus the amount of work over the second division. Uh, then we can recognize this can be put together with the sigma where i equals 1 to 2, uh, we have f uh, of ti dot r prime of ti delta t. Uh, we take a limit. Uh, as delta t goes smaller, the number of divisions increases. So we take the limit as delta t goes to 0 of uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of uh, ti dot r prime of ti delta t. And that becomes the integral from t initial to t final of f dot r prime of t dt. And that's called a line integral.